everybody, welcome back to our True Image YouTube channel. We are in a series right now entitled Let It Go. And in this particular video, we're gonna be talking about letting go of control. So I'm gonna go ahead and pray. I hope you're ready for this one. I am ready and we'll go ahead and pray and then get into it. Father, I just thank you. God, I thank you so much for everyone that's watching. God, I thank you for the work that you are doing in all of us. God, I thank you that as we have been talking about letting go of sin and offense, and as we're gonna talk about today, letting go of control, God, I just pray that we're not weighed down and feeling um, burdened, God, by just all of this stuff. But Father, I thank you that you are teaching us and showing us how to let go of these things so we can walk and live the life that you've called us to live. Father, I thank you that we are letting go of these things once and for all, that even when these things try to come back on our lives and try to trip us up again, Father, I just thank you that we are more aware of these things. And I just thank you that we have the strength to let these things go, God. And I just pray for your word today. I thank you for this lesson about letting go of control. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are helping us to just let go and to trust you completely in Jesus' name, amen. Well, like I said in most of all the other videos, if not all of them, um, these are things that I am myself working on. And if all of out of all of these ones, I would say for me personally right now, this is something that I am really um, learning a lot about and really seeking God on and um, just really having some time with God where He's just showing me things and um, helping me uh, deal with these things. And I pray that even with you, that no matter where you fall, or whether it's one or all of these um, videos that we've done, these issues and these topics, you know, that just don't beat yourself upside the head so much because we're all on a journey. It's all about a process and you're not gonna arrive there overnight. And I know sometimes we can look at things and think, oh my gosh, I have the longest way to go but you're a lot closer today than you were yesterday. And so I encourage you, don't try to take on all of these um, issues all at once. Um, uh, try to go through them wherever you feel like the Lord's leading you to really get a handle on certain things. And I mean, anybody can look at their life and say, oh my gosh, when you really start looking at things, it's like, this is an, I'm never going to get anywhere. And uh, I've learned sometimes I'm focusing on certain things and I'm just going in circles because I'm just, I'm not dealing with them the right way. And so the best way to deal with all of our issues is to deal with, deal with it with the word of God and um, have accountability um, and uh, just serve and grow and and don't be so hard on yourself as we're um, walking through these things because sometimes the enemy can really magnify these things in our life and make you feel, well, you, you're you never gonna get there. You're never gonna have freedom from these things. And so that's a lie. And I just encourage, if you really wanna be free, then we'll do whatever we need to do to not just be free, but stay free. So in this, in this video, this lesson, we're gonna be talking about letting go of control. and. I had a, a friend of mine recently, I'm gonna open up with a story. Um, I had a friend of mine recently talk to me and um, she's like, you know your problem? And I was like, well, I, I think, I mean, I'm aware of my issues. And she said, I think one of your problems is you need to let go of control and you need to let go of your expectation. And I was like, what? And she talked to me some and she's like, just go pray. You know, I believe God will show you. So I went home and I prayed and um, really seeking the Lord because even when she said that, it just kind of was like a dagger in my heart um, in a good way. It wasn't like a bad thing because I want to be grow. I want to grow and I want to be stretched and challenged um, as well. And um, and so I went to prayer and, and the Lord really began to show me is that it's not that I, we don't need to have expectations because we do need to have expectations. We do need to believe God to do things. But what my friend was telling me, for me in particular, is that I get really discouraged when things don't work out the way I thought they would, especially concerning the things of God. And a lot of times, you know, I've heard people say, well, just don't have any expectations. That way you won't ever be disappointed. And um, and I don't, I don't agree with that. I think that's living in a... Um, pessimistic uh, outlook on life and I don't want to be a negative Nancy. Um, I want to be positive and I want to be believing God. And and so for me, what this particular lesson uh, that God is still working in me on and showing me is that it's not that I don't have expectations. It's just that I can't expect things to look, even in the things of God, 
that they have to be done this certain way. And I think that's when a lot of times we get disappointed, we get discouraged when we have expectation and things don't go as we expected. But I've learned with God, and I'm talking about pursuing godly things, not just general expectation, but when you're believing God, things with God never work out the way you thought. They never work out the way you thought planned. They're always better. And they go, no matter how many times or how many ways you can think of things for certain things to work out, God still has a million and a bazillion other ways things can come to pass. And so I was finding myself recently, I'm um, just really struggling because even things that I was believing God for, things that I'm still believing God for, things I'm waiting to see God do, um, things in my life and in the lives of, of people um, that are in my life that I'm also believing for them, I realize it might not happen the way I thought. Does not mean, it doesn't mean that God's not gonna work, it doesn't mean that God's not gonna move, but I think that disappointment and that discouragement comes and it comes and it weighs so heavy to where you get disappointed even with things, the things of God, even with God, even with yourself. And it wasn't like I was pointing my finger like mad at God, you know, it, it re, you know, really, it was just kind of like confusion, like, well, Lord, I thought this, have I had moments where I was mad at God? Absolutely, and those were things I had to work out in my own heart, but um, because if I didn't understand how things are done, but I trust the Lord, and I've said this before, that it's hard for us to trust someone we don't know. And I, uh, when I was talking to the Lord about this area of control in my life, he's like, Lindsay, you know, there, there are certain areas of your life that you have to have control over. And I've caused, I've realized what can cause certain amounts of tension and certain amounts of frustration and certain amounts of stress that I've realized for me personally, um, that some of my stuff, my physical things that I've had just struggles with in my stomach and in my body and just a whole bunch of different stuff, um, headaches and pains, a lot of my stuff I've realized that it's self-induced, that it's self-induced stress and it all comes down to I'm worrying way too much. And if you're a worrier, I can guarantee you, you're a controller to a certain extent because if you're worrying, you're fretting, you're concerned about this, you're concerned about that. So instead of being concerned and worry about it, you try to make things happen and you try to do things yourself. And you can only do that for so long to where you realize there are certain things and people we can't control. Um, now some people can use the controlling thing and go so far to the extreme that they wanna control everything and everyone. Um, you know, in their life, and even if they're they're not really a part of their life, they just want to try to control and uh, do, you know, control everything and everyone anyway. But for me, it was trying to control different areas in my heart that for some reason, I caught myself slipping over into a realm of pride that I thought, well, God, I've got this. And I wasn't really letting the Lord lead me in that area. And when it comes to, you know, living a life of surrender, you know, it's not the matter of I'm not surrendering my heart to the Lord. It's just in this season, it's very different. Normally when it's the beginning of the year, the end of the year, I've got some kind of goals, I've got some kind of vision, I've got some kind of, and it's not like I haven't been praying, I haven't been seeking the Lord. Um, right now my husband and I are doing some uh uh, we're basically using the whole month of January as like a detox and a purging month um, in our bodies and our home. We're just like, we're just doing a major purge. And so you can imagine what that's like physically. And then you can imagine what that is like um, emotionally and uh, in your soul and also what that is like spiritually. So we're just really taking this time right now to really just seek God and hear his voice and realizing that the more I open up myself to the Lord is that there are some other areas that I have surrendered, but I haven't surrendered completely. And um, and so some of that is in the areas of, of control. And over in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30, it says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke on you and learn from me because I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear and my load is not hard to carry. First Peter 5, 7 says, cast all of your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Matthew 6, 27 says, can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? You know, I think one of the things with people that we battle control is that when there are things that we didn't have control over, that really frustrated us and caused us hurt or pain or major damage in our hearts and in our lives, 
we go overboard and we want to control everything. We want to, I mean, that's why I think some people, if you're watching, you can have the tendency to be very OCD in certain things um, because it's it's a matter of control. And that's something that you really have to seek seek God on your own and say, okay, well, where is this sense of needing I feel like I have to control coming from? And those are some things for me personally. I'm still realizing, um, Lord, I have to trust you with our finances. Lord, I have to speak your word over concerning certain things in my health. Lord, I'm taking the steps that I need to take. Lord, I can't worry about this person. I can't worry about how they're going to respond to me if I have to say something that they're not going to want to hear. Um, but Lord, help me season my words with grace. You know, doesn't mean I'm not going to say the truth, um, but Lord, help me still say what needs to be said. Um, because sometimes I feel like we're, we try to control. And then I think sometimes on the opposite side, we let people control us. Um, that was something that I struggled with in so many areas of my life and relationships because I was so insecure that if my friend was upset with me, I would go overboard to make sure that she wasn't upset with me anymore. And I realized as I got older, certain friends really took advantage of that. And then certain of my other friends are like, why are you letting these people or this person control you that way? Um, they would say something and it just ruined my entire day. Um, people at church, people that I was you know, helping or walking through life situations with or in friendships and family. It's just crazy how if we're not careful we can not only tend to try to control people or control things in our lives, sometimes we can be the other way and we are so insecure with ourselves that we let other people control us. And I am, I am, like I said, I'm in this process right now. The Holy Spirit's still revealing a lot to me about this, but if we're going to allow ourselves in the word of God, I don't have this scripture written down, but talks about going out with joy and being led by peace, you know, being led by the Holy Spirit and all things that we do is that I'm not going to be led by my emotions. I'm not going to be led by my sin. I'm not going to be led by my offense. And with all of that is, okay, Lord, I cannot allow myself to, to, to try to control this thing. Because bottom line, bottom line is if we're trying to control things in our life, it's because we're not trusting the Lord. There are certain things we do have control over. We have a very strong will. Um, some of us need to exercise our strong will. We have a strong will, but sometimes even our greatest, our, our strong, our strengths and our will, whatever those things are, um, sometimes whatever we're going through, even those that have the strongest will, it's still hard for them to overcome things. And so I have realized for me personally that I have been having to swallow a lot of prideful um, pills. I've had to recently, like really recently, um, and it doesn't, it's not good. And one of the things that the Lord has been showing me personally is it's great to know these things. It's great to admit these things, but it's also even greater to realize these things. And the Lord exposes these things because he doesn't want us to leave us there. And part of these things that I'm realizing in this particular time in my life of letting go of all kinds of stuff is that it is painfully freeing. It's painful to admit that you're not trusting the Lord in certain areas. It's painful and it's hard to let go of certain things that you really want to hang on to, but it's really not doing you any good. It's actually causing you more harm than it is good. It's hard when you're trying to let go and walk away from certain relationships that you know aren't good for you, but it's the matter of letting it go. It's painfully freeing. And so when it comes to the sense of control, um, it's important that, just, it, it, this is an example, if I have someone that I ask them to do something and I say, hey, all I need is ABC done. I don't care how you do it, just get ABC done. They go and they do it, but they do it completely differently. The same level of excellence is, is there, but they do it completely different. Now a controlling person would say, but I want it done this way. And if it's not done ABC, then you've done it wrong. No, if I ask ABC, if I want ABC to get done and you do it, but you do it in the way of one, two, three, but like I said, everything else is the same, it gets done, then there's, there should be no problem with that. But a controlling person's like, no, I want it done my way and this is the only way it can be done. And I have found myself in certain areas of my life recently telling the Lord, Maybe not that exact same phrase, but God, I need you to do this, but I need it to be done in this way on this timetable. 
And I just, as I began to realize these things in my own heart, I was like, Lindsay, that is not good. You have to be willing to let go of that control in these certain areas of your life. John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave with you, my peace um, I give to you, not as the world gives. Uh, do not let your heart be troubled or let it fear. Listen, a controlling person is a, feel, a, fearful, a fearful person. And these have been some things that I have dealt with that I've worked on, um, but it's been like lately, everything has been magnified. And so um, I'm just sharing my heart with you about these things. Um, Isaiah 26, 3 says, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind are steadfast because they trust in you. Listen, a person that's not going to be a controlling person, um, they're, they're not going to get uh, their pants all in a wad or their panties or undies, whatever, uh, all in a wad. They're, they're going to trust the Lord. And when things come, they're just going to buckle down and, okay, Lord, I, I trust you. And um, Colossians 3, 2 says, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Proverbs 3, 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lead not into your own understanding. Psalms 46, 10 through 11 says, let go of your concerns, then you will know that I am God. Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You know, part of letting go of control is that we are trusting God. I might not have all the answers. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of things I'm praying about. I'm back, actually about to uh, do a social media fast and, and another food fast and things that, that because I am in desperate need of, of answers. I am in desperate need of vision. I am in desperate need of direction. And I do not want to move forward or try to do something just because I can easily do something and make it happen. And sometimes we have to get to that point in our life where it's like, God, I have no clue where you're taking me. But this one thing I do is I'm going to trust you. I'm not going to lean to my understanding. I'm going to give thanks in the midst of storms. I'm going to give thanks in the midst of difficulty. I'm going to still walk in love in the midst of offense. I'm still going to let go of these things that you're asking me to let go of. I'm still going to let go of these relationships, these sins, whatever you've been asking me to do. Because listen, God can show us what we need to do, but it's our obedience to let go of those things because we can know, yep, I know I need to let go of it, but are you going to let go of it? I was working out with my trainer uh, just yesterday, actually, and um, this detox, I've never done this particular detox that I'm doing, and it is just kicking me in the pants, and it's been really hard because I love food, um, and that's a whole other thing that God's showing me about certain things, and um it's been so hard on me. I've been super emotional. I've been super just on edge because I've never done this to my body before. And it's going through like a shock phase. It's cleansing. It's doing all these things. And he asked me the question. He said, are you really to press in? Are you really ready to press in? And I just looked at him and I was like, mm-hmm, um, yes. He's like, no, are you really ready to press in? Because this whole purging that my husband and I felt we need to do for this year in our life, spirit, soul, and body, we don't see the big picture. We just both felt like it's January, we need to do this. And um, so it's been really, really hard. And so my trainer's like, I want you to go pray and I want you to tell me, you know, what you feel that the Lord's leading you to do. And so when he said the word press in, the Lord just began to speak to me was like, Obviously, you're pressing into you're impressing into the Lord in a very intense way right now. Um, I'm pressing past my feelings. I'm pressing past my pain. I'm pressing past my hunger, um, a lot of hunger. Um, I'm pressing past uh, my emotions. I'm pressing past my thoughts. I'm pressing past my fears. Just all of this whole pressing in. And so sometimes when it's that control thing, because you just want to know what's going to happen. And I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what this year is going to bring for me. I don't know what this year is going to bring for you. But I do know as long as if we try to stay in control, of our life, we're not going to have what God has for us. We have to be willing to take our hands off and put our hands up and say, Lord, I'm letting go of my control. I'm surrendering all of this to you. I don't know what this is going to look like, but you do. And I trust you. And I'm going to believe your word. I'm going to stand on your word. I'm going to stand on your promises. And so I just encourage you, if you're struggling with control, 
Your sister right here is struggling in some areas of her life as well, but I'm going to keep walking. I'm going to keep trusting the Lord. I'm going to keep um, his word ever before me. And listen, if you have to do a fast, if you have to give up something completely to do whatever, to get whatever you need to get, I encourage you to do it because I know there's something greater on the other side of this season. Um, but I just, we have to do our part because God's ready to meet with you. And so I just encourage you, let go of your control. I gave you a ton of scripture to meditate on, to speak that word over your life. And if you are somebody that is easily controlled by people, you need to deal with that because you do not need to allow people to control you because that's people pleasing that can grow into people bondage. And when you are doing things for man, um, you're never going to be satisfied. You're never going to be fulfilled because man didn't call you. God called you. And so um, I just encourage you, let go of control. Let go of, you, of yourself being controlled by situations or by people, whatever it is, and begin to declare God's word of your life because God wants you to be free. God wants you to let things go. And so I, I, I hope you've been encouraged. I hope that these videos have blessed you. Uh, we'll be back next month with a new series and uh, I can't wait. And so I hope you're having a great day and um, let it go. Your life, your sanity, your peace, and God's calling on your life is worth to let go of anything, as it says in Hebrews 12, that is easily, that entangles you and trips you up. Let it it go and stay focused on Jesus and press in to him because I believe he wants to show you something amazing about your life and your future. So I love you guys. Thank you for watching and I'll see you later. And so I just want to um, just kind of set this up for you. You know, everybody sins. Everyone has made mistakes. But what I'm referencing in this particular video is when you